June 25, 1997, a convincing explanation for at least one of the Phoenix UFO events emerged from a local TV station. Well, it's a possible explanation into those mystery lights that appeared over the valley in March. But some of you aren't buying it. 12 News has video that might explain what was going on. Let's start with pictures that were taken on March 13th. Many of you saw this row of lights as they hovered above the valley horizon. Now, take a close look at these pictures that we shot just last night. These are flares that the Air Force was dropping near Gila Bend. Now let's go back to the video from March. You'll remember the lights faded out one by one. Let's take a look. You're going to see how they're slow fading out one by one and again looking back at those flares from last night they also burn out one by one there they go illumination flares like those recorded by kpnx on june 25th are used by military aircraft to light up battlefields and expose targets during night combat Dropped from high-altitude aircraft and attached to tiny parachutes, the flares which descend very slowly can burn brightly for up to five minutes. When we saw those lights pop on in the sky, to us they looked exactly the same. The photographer and I just looked at us and goes, well, there's your light. It looked so similar to us, it had to be the explanation. Although we didn't know who could have dropped the flares that night. If the lights seen hovering on the horizon on March 13th were in fact flares, then who dropped them? Initially, Air Force officials denied that any of their aircraft were involved in maneuvers in the area that night. But oddly, after the KPNX broadcast, they reversed their statement. Now they admit that on the night in question, the visiting Maryland Air National Guard had conducted night maneuvers, which involved the use of illumination flares. Our unit was flying March 13, 1997, as part of Operation Snowbird, and we were conducting night training. This is a map of the training area that we use when we fly in the airplane and we take off from davis Monthan air force base fly to the northwest into the military operating area and at that particular night our aircraft flew to the north tac range and that's where they uh, deployed the flares for the uh, training mission that evening phoenix sits just to the north of this area the uh, the lights that were observed were about 30 miles southwest of Phoenix, which is close to exactly where the North Tack range sits. No jet aircraft, no helicopters that could have dropped these flares. So let's go over and look at this object right here. Shortly after the announcement about the Maryland Air National Guard maneuvers, Jim Delatoso reanalyzed the video From tapes. From the Channel 12 video, we have the flare objects. This time, and he compared the light formations recorded on March 13th with the images of the illumination flares shot by KPNX on June 25th. When we compared these lights to flares, we didn't get a match. The optical characteristics between the unknown objects and flares don't match. They're so different from each other that it's not even close. But not everyone agrees with Delatoso's conclusions or the accuracy of his methods. Videotape does not have the resolution that you need to perform those particular type of tests. Videotape is very, very limited in use in investigating uh, UFO instances. The camera actually overloads from the brightness of these flares. We'd rather see film, motion picture film, or actually 35 millimeter, which gives us a lot more dynamic range and much more resolution than videotape does. We've gone to extremes to test them for being flares. And the naysayers that want them to be flares, guess what? They can just keep on doing that. We've moved on to other things. According to the Maryland Air National Guard, the illumination flares were deployed, fell, and disappeared from sight behind the mountain range seen in the video. 
But many eyewitnesses claim that the lights they saw were in front of the range and therefore could not have been the same flares. In an attempt to settle this crucial debate, we gave the tapes shot by one of the witnesses to Dr. Leonoid Rudin of Cognitech, a California-based image processing firm. Rudin examined the same images that had been previously analyzed by Jim Dilatoso. We were presented with two videotapes. One videotape was shot at night. Another videotape was uh, made uh, during the day from approximately the same location with the camera pointing in approximately the same direction. Give you the uh, angle and idea of the surroundings and what we saw at night and the mountains where the lights appeared to be. There's a mountain range here as well. We don't know where it is over here. Rudin first lined up the day and nighttime images using the ridge line in the foreground as a reference. By overlaying the images, he could determine if the lights simply vanished on their own or disappeared behind the distant mountain range. So we superimposed two video sequences. We produced a new video sequence in which each frame is a combination of two frames, night and day. We registered the hill. We have no control whether it comes below the mountain or above the mountain. After several hours, the intricate process was complete. This is a loop which repeats this uh, disappearing sequence over and over again. And the one thing that we see here, which is striking, is that at no point the lights disappear above the ridge of the mountain, and at no point the lights descend below the ridge of the mountain. The disappearance of the light coincides precisely with the point in time when the light is exactly at the top of the mountain. And that happens not with one light, not with two lights, but with all the lights that we see on the videotape. Therefore, the only conclusion we have is that those lights are behind the mountains, not in front of the mountains. Armed with this information, watch the videotape again and judge for yourself. Are these merely flares dropping behind a mountain range or UFOs mysteriously vanishing? Sometimes the human eye can form its own conclusions. This dramatic demonstration seems to support the contention that the 10 o'clock event was the result of illumination flares being dropped behind the distant ridge. However, the controversy surrounding the V-shaped formation seen between 8.15 and 8.45 p.m. is far from over.